Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel where today we are doing a full-length non-spoilery review of Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. So Foundry Side is the first book in a fantasy trilogy and in it we are following our main character of Sanchia who is an amazing thief and she is hired for a job to steal something that is going to be very difficult to steal and of course she manages it, but she very quickly realizes that the object that she has stolen is magical and incredibly powerful and in the wrong hands would be absolutely devastating. So she opts to not turn it over to the people that would probably use it incorrectly and she keeps it for herself and goes on the run and she falls in with a ragtag group of people and the story kind of goes from there. So first up, let's talk about the world building. And I found the world building to be, I found the concept itself to be very interesting. So essentially our current civilization is living in the shadow of an ancient civilization. So like a thousand years ago, there were the ancients and they were very, very powerful, able to remake reality almost at their will, at their leisure. And with like magic, they don't call it magic, but it's, basically magic. Um, and then something happened to that civilization and it was just completely wiped out. Um, but humanity did live on. And so we have the stories from this ancient civilization. We know that they did these amazing magical type of things. Um, and so a hundred years, 50 to a hundred years ago, the current, the current day civilization actually found some writings from that time period and they found some of the stuff that helps them understand how the magic was used like a much uh less effective version of the magic and they have since built upon it until present day where this is very much like um a big thing that various people are competing like who can figure out the next part of the magic system essentially and I found all of this to be very, very interesting and very poorly executed. So my thing is that I love world building and I love worlds that make sense. And this problem with this one is that on the surface, it's incredibly interesting. And unfortunately, as you're reading, it becomes very apparent that it's all very surface level. As soon as you start poking at it or looking at the underpinnings of what's happening, it doesn't make a ton of sense or we don't know enough for it to make sense. So for example, these ancients that were able to rewrite reality, well, they did it as like a form of a loophole in this rule essentially. And I'm sitting here like, okay, where did the rule come from? Was it handed down from a divine being? If so, where are they now? Did, is it a rule they imposed upon each other? probably not since everybody seems to want to figure out the loophole to it and like uh, why figure out the loophole if you could just break it because it's something imposed upon each other did they figure out this the, these loopholes through like scientific experimentation well maybe but that's really difficult to do if you don't know the rule like finding loopholes to a rule is really hard if you don't know the rule Anyway, so like, and we're never given an explanation. No, normally that's something that I could overlook because I don't need to know everything about the world as much as I would like to, I don't need to. However, this is stuff, the stuff that had holes in it was stuff that is actually important to the plot. And so I, it was just glaringly obvious to me that it really wasn't well thought out, or at least we didn't, we weren't given enough details for it to make sense. And again, because it's part of the plot, it really should have made sense. Now, this is also, like I said, it's very, this is a personal preference of mine. So if you're able to overlook that kind of thing, this probably won't be a big deal to you. It is still very, like I said, an interesting concept, but for me, it didn't work. Um, and this magic system is very much the same. It's very unique. You use basically the this writing system of sigils and you put them together to basically code instructions for objects to make them behave in a way that they wouldn't normally. Really interesting, very poorly explained. And my other problem with it, which again, 
personal preference, we laid down a lot of rules in the beginning about how this magic works. And then the rest of the time we spent trying to figure out the loopholes, trying to subvert those rules. And I just didn't really appreciate it because it meant that anybody who could figure out the loophole, who could figure out how to subvert the rules were basically all powerful. And I was just like, I just, I didn't really want that. That's like, that's not what I want from my magic system. I think it's cool that they're using, figuring out um, the loopholes for the logic, but I don't like the end result and what it ended up doing to the plot. So overall with world building, all very interesting concepts, but I think it was very poorly executed. Which brings us to our characters. And our main character of Sanchia is fine. She is just kind of there. I really didn't connect with her until the end of the book, which is not great. <laughs> so um, like part of this is because we didn't get a ton about her backstory. It was hinted at through like the first half and then at about the halfway point, we got the big backstory reveal and it was all stuff that we basically had been, that had been hinted at before and we all could have guessed the vast majority of it. And it wasn't enough for me to change my opinion of her or understand her any better. So I was just like, so with having so little information about her that truly mattered, I just didn't really connect with her. And then likewise, her development, it was almost non-existent. We did get a chapter at the end that was trying to be development, but it was poorly written. And honestly, the style of it made it kind of out of place for what was happening. And I just don't think it accomplished what it was trying to do. So overall, this character felt very bland, very much just there. Now, I will say that Sanchia with one of the other characters, Bernice, was great. They had really great interactions. Like, we didn't learn anything about them, really, but we they had really great interactions that were really fun to watch. In general, I liked Bernice as a character, which is good because she's probably the only one that I actively liked. Um, but even still, she's not amazingly well-developed either. Um, all the other characters, especially the characters in this group, really felt like they were there to fill a quota. Like, this is what we need for the plot to move forward, and so I'm going to put it in. But there really wasn't a ton there, other than one character, Gregor, and again, like Sanchia, even though it we had the background story, it didn't really it felt like it was just put in by rote rather than like actually making these characters individual, almost real people. Um, but I did find that the group was far more interesting to watch than the individual characters. So I did at least appreciate the group dynamic. Um, and then for our villains, I also thought this was a huge miss. There were basically two villains. One of them was just mustache twirling evil that does evil things and we're going to see the evil things to know that he's evil, which, yeah. And the other one actually had some interesting reasons why they would be cast as a villain. Um, and unfortunately, all of those reasons were boiled down to the most simplistic version of those reasons. And, and so it just like if they we had the more nuanced version it would have be this villain would have been amazing it would have been a really interesting um addition to the book but instead we got this very simplistic version of their reasons and it just kind of turned them into a mustache twirling kind of villain unfortunately which brings us to our plot and <laughs> um my reaction to what is the plot of like you know, the plot is what plot? So our big problem with the plot is, it's, well, our plot is very, very straightforward. Um, and there's just not a lot going on with it. Like we needed more events to happen along the way. We did have some and even some that were more twisty, turny kind of plot points, but it took us so long to get there that it didn't, uh, I didn't care. Like it didn't feel substantial. Now, I'm, I joked that there was like, what plot, right? 
all the plot is really crammed in at the end. <laughs> That's actually what it boils down to. And so part of the interesting thing is that we had the overarching plot for this particular book, and it felt like that mostly wrapped up within like 400 to 450 pages. And the remaining 50 to 100 pages was really just set up for the trilogy, for the overarching plot for the trilogy, the um, set up for the second book, you know, the expansion of the world in the second book, all of that fun stuff, which generally does happen in the first book of a trilogy, and I'm not knocking it for that. My problem was that these two things, the, um, the, the wrap up of the plot of this book and the setup for the next book felt like two completely separate things. They were not as well integrated as I would have liked. So it did feel like we finished the book and then we still had like a hundred more pages to read that was just set up for the next book. And I will say that having everything shoved into the end meant that there was so much going on that there were definitely details that I missed. But because of all the other problems with the world building and the characters and not having much plot up to that point, I didn't care that I was missing details. I didn't care that I was not understanding as well as I could have. And that's like kiss of death right there. Like if you can't make me care about what's going to be happening in the next book, I'm not going to pick up the next book. And so I think that the plot should have been evened out a little bit more and have things more throughout the book rather than just crammed in at the end. Which brings us to structure, style, and pacing. So for writing style, I mentioned this a little bit, maybe alluded to it, but there were a lot of details about a lot of things that did not matter. So it kind of gave you a general picture, but we never truly got a, like, we never clearly focused on any one thing. We just got a bunch of details that kind of helped with the broader picture. Um, and I found that the details were honestly just kind of overloaded. Um, there were just too many, like I said, too many that just didn't end up mattering to the main storyline. Additionally, writing style wise, this was very strange in that the writing style itself feels very YA, but the content is more in the adult category. And it didn't really meld very well. Now I know that there are books out there that are generally designed to be more crossover. So it's written in a way where like both adults and teens can enjoy it. And that's not what this was. This was like a writing style that did not meld with the content basically at all. So like the entire time I was just, as I've been trying to describe this in my reading vlogs, in this review, I didn't know whether to call it a YA or an adult. And so that was a little bit frustrating, to be honest. Um, and then lastly, we'll talk about pacing. And I found this to be all over the place. So pacing in terms of like action scenes, it was very, very fast paced. But when you kind of sat back and said, okay, what happened? How, like, how much did we move the plot forward? It was like, basically non-existent. So the first hundred pages was like one long action scene. And I said, well, okay, what's the plot? I don't know. And so it was very much all over the place. And then at the end, when you kind of expect it to be really f like a lot faster, it kind of slowed down because we were trying to integrate so many of those plot points that were necessary before we could move on to the second book. And so it just felt very odd. It didn't it didn't really feel like it knew what it wanted to do. So overall, clearly I had some issues with this book. I think it was really interesting concepts, interesting ideas that were just executed so poorly. And I ended up giving this an overall rating of a generous three stars. Now, I know that this is a very well-loved book among people, so I would love to hear your thoughts and feelings down in the comments below, but that is all I have. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and until next time, have happy reading, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!